So as you can see, we have our tables on the left panel already created into our database tutorial one. And uh, if you even see uh, into each table, you can see that these are the columns that we had already created and already loaded the data into it. So let's start with our first query. So our first query is retrieve all employees whose address is in Elling IL. So basically we are supposed to retrieve the names of employees from our employee table who has the following address as mentioned. This is a very simple query and uh, uh, we, we need only the name of the employee. So we need as an output only one field. And uh, also the condition is just one that is singular. Uh, the condition is address. So it's a very simple query and let's have a look how will we perform the same in our database. So as you can see, uh, let's start to perform the query. So the query that we have performed is select. That is the first step always whenever you start to fire a query. You have to first select. After that, you have to mention the fields which you want to select. So here we want to retrieve all employees. So we will be selecting the first name, the last name. Also, we want address of every employee. So we also will be selecting address. So at the start of the query, we have to be very clear about the fields that we want to select. Here we can bifurcate the query as we want to select first name, last name and address. So after selecting first name, last name and address, the second thing which remains constant whether you fire any query, the structure always remains same. The first is selection. The second is from where are we selecting? So currently, we are selecting it from the employees table. So it will be the name of that table. So employee. And at last, the condition. So here, the condition is address. So the condition always falls where. So here the condition is address. And what is the address? The address is Ling, comma, IL. So whenever we are selecting something which is specific that this particular address, it will always come with like. So where address, like, and the name of the address, since it's a proper noun, we'll be giving it as shown uh, here in the video. It will be uh, inside the percentage sign along with closed inverted commas. And at last, the entire query ends with a semicolon and uh, let's run the query again as you can see all those addresses which is having a link il have been selected and when you run the query there's a button above so we just clicked on the button next okay then let's head towards our second query so our second query is Retrieve all employee who were born during 1970s. Now, if we closely understand the query, it is we have to retrieve all the names of the employee who were born during 1970s. So here we have uh, age, uh, sorry, not age, but year bar or a year limit. It's not specific to 1970, it's 1970s. So everyone who's born in the entire decade of 1970, uh, their names have to be retrieved. So when we start uh, the query, let's just have a look. We'll first select obviously the first name and the last name of the employee. 
from which table so it will be obviously from the employees table because that record is entirely an employee table and uh, here we have a birth date set to 1970 so one of the option is we can add where birth date like and what is the range so it is 197 and after it percentage means anything after 7 so it can be 71 72 73 etc so 197 and then percentage so as you see when you get the output you get names of all those employees whose birth date has a year of 1970s. Another way of approaching the same query is between. So we can give a range. This range can be the minimum year that is 1970 itself till 1979 because there's no year after that. So we can give a range of date that is 1-1 one, one from 1970 till the December 31st of 1979. So here the syntax is as shown between and and since the two data are specific they will be enclosed in inverted commas. So as you see even if you execute these you will get an output as shown below. That's it for the second query. I hope the uh, between is clear to everyone. So now let's move on to the third query. So for the third query, um, it says select names of all employees in department 5 whose salary is between 60,000 and 70,000. So here we have two conditions. One is department 5 and the other is uh, the salary range which has to be between 60,000 and 70,000. So let's see. So here we have to grab uh, the names of the employees. So we can say select star from the employees table. And here the condition is salary has to be in between 60,000 and 70,000. So where salary between 60 and 70,000. And the other condition is the department is department 5 so department id you have to set as 5 alternatively we can also give the range of the salary by using greater than and less than signs so we can also put a condition about the salary where is greater than or equal to 60,000 and it is less than or equal to 70,000. So here we are combining these two conditions with the help of AND and our third condition is the department has to be department 5. So department ID is equal to uh, 5. So this is how uh, we can give range uh, as we have seen in query 3 that we can give uh, a certain range uh, with the help of between or even with the help of uh, less than or greater than signs and uh, at last we can attach uh, the third condition also with the help of and that's it for the third query now let's see if, uh, move on for the fourth query ahead it involves a lot of newer operations and joinings. So uh, we'll be learning um, other operations in SQL queries and uh, something which is not as simple as we have done. So let's see what our fourth query is. So our fourth query basically says that retrieve a list of employees ordered by department and within each department ordered alphabetically by first name in descending order. 
So as you can see the structure of queries, there are, uh, if we break down, uh, we can see that there are conditions involved. The first is those names of employees which are ordered by department. The second is even inside the department, the names should be ordered alphabetically in descending order. So let us first see what is ordered by. Uh, ordered by is basically grouping. So whenever you want to extract some information, uh, which can be names of employees, which can be ID, etc. You group those information with the help of other column of the table. So here we are grouping that by using department. And after we group them, after we got the information of employees, we are again ordering them alphabetically in descending order. But the most important concept that we are learning in this query is the use of joins. Now, as you can see, our information of employee ID is in the employees table and information of department is in department table. So these two information for which we want to get the employee names, these two information are in different tables. So here we need to join these tables. You can join two tables only by a common column name. And after, or you can say a common attribute, these two tables must have a common attribute on which you'll be joining these two tables. And after the joining operation happens, these two tables are joined into a single table and then you can carry out the operations you want to perform on the table. This is how we are going to approach the fourth query. So let us see how do we write the query. So first, just have a look at the fields that which we want to select. We want department name, though in the output we just want the first name and the last name, but we are grouping the names of the employees with the help of department names. So we want department name, the first name and the last name of every employee. So you have to select the three fields that we want from the employees table. And uh, here we are going to perform inner join. So we are performing inner join of departments on the employee table. But how are we supposed to write in the form of query? As we discussed that inner join can be applied only on the two common attributes or fields. So here department ID is common in both the tables. So we will join based on department ID that is performing inner join departments on employees dot the department ID which is equal to the department ID of the departments that is departments dot department ID. So this is how now we have joined the two tables and the other condition is inside the department name the uh, sorry inside the department ID the names should be ordered in descending order. So it should be ordered alphabetically in descending order. And uh, so as we have written, order by the department name and last name and DESC that is in descending order. We can also do it as ASC in for ascending orders. So uh, we have ordered by the last name based on descending order inside the department. So as you can see the output below, uh, we have got the names of employees in descending orders based on the department. So every department is grouped as you can see architect group, design team, 
etc so every department is first grouped and the names that show up in each department are arranged alphabetically that's it for the fourth query it was important to understand how the join operation works and uh, how we can group by specific id and let's approach for the fifth query the fifth query involves some mathematical operations so it says that retrieve the department number the number of employees and their average salary so as you see that uh, we have to retrieve the number of employees that involves counting the employees so the count operation and the average salary of every employee so that come involves the average operation so when you write in the form of query you write it as since we have to retrieve the department number uh, we have to select department id the second thing we have to do is we have to count the number of employees so you can directly write count star star means the entire uh, the entire selection that is all the employees so it will count the number of employees and uh, the average of salary has to be retrieved so you have to select average of salary uh, from the employees table since you have to select the average salary and count the number of employees you have to group by and you will be grouping it by uh, the department id so whenever we use count it is necessary to group by because else uh, it will retrieve the count every time as a single unit that is one so unless we don't group uh, by uh, it won't give the count so um, this is what uh, the fifth query involves as we saw how we can calculate the average how we can count and uh, what is the necessary condition when you want to return uh, the total count of uh, any attribute or field so this brings us to the end of the tutorial uh, in this tutorial we performed certain queries and uh, we, we saw some variety of queries involved with different operations uh, in the next tutorial, we'll be approaching for the query optimization in the MySQL and how can we optimize the query for better performance. So that is what we'll be seeing in the next tutorial. Uh, so follow us on, or follow us on the next tutorial. Goodbye.